Hey there guys, it's Liz here, your integrative health practitioner. And uh, this video is gonna be pretty informal. I'm hopping on here in between um, client calls today, but wanted to give you guys some feedback about how I use my portable nebulizer that I posted about on my stories yesterday and you guys were bombarding me with a ton of questions. So I wanted to bring you some answers as well as something like the Nasopure, the neti pot, the navage, and other nasal sprays in order to be able to help to support your immune system, support your respiratory health, um, you know, potentially support any like bacterial or different other types of infections, especially what's been going on over the last year and a half, as well as parasites, mold, lime, and other things that can get caught in the nasal path passageways within, um, you know, your sinuses all the way up into, you know, your brain. We can have a lot of pathogens get stuck there. In the lungs, they can stay stagnant. So it's an area that a lot of times we'll orally consume things, um, but we're not getting things as systemic as we could by using something like a nebulizer, by using um, some type of nasal rinse or nasal spray to really get some of these uh, powerful products in an area where pathogens really love to hide and go undetected. All right, so there's gonna be three primary products I'm gonna be sharing with you today. These are not the only options that you can use. I know that some people had seen me post about my nebulizer and immediately start asking, of course, what I put in there. And hydrogen peroxide was a big one that people were asking me about. Uh, Dr. Mercola has some great instructions that he has shared before, before about how you can use hydrogen peroxide to be able to nebulize, but I have not used that personally yet. So I'm only going to be sharing the things that I have personally used with myself, my family, my clients. And so this is for educational purposes. This is not to be deemed as medical advice. And as with anything that you may find from me, another practitioner, a health coach out there, someone that's just trying to educate you, always push it by your practitioner first. You need to make sure that you're in a state of healing where this is a good idea for you. And so for legality purposes, I need to remind you guys of that. If I am not your practitioner, you need to run it by yours before you go and implement some of these things, okay? But I believe you guys have a right to know some of the options out there so that you can have educated conversations with your practitioner. So um, the three different products I'm gonna be talking about today are hydroxygen from Cellcor. So this is this used to be called biomolecular oxygen. Um, so it is a stabilized molecular oxygen to be able to really penetrate the tissues in the body. Oxygen brings life. Clearly we need to breathe. Our cells need oxygen. Um, pathogens, bacteria don't survive well in an aerobic environment, one that has oxygen in there. So the more that we can introduce into the body, uh, the better we work metabolically, um, the less that these different pathogens can survive in the body, the faster that we can heal tissues. So to be able to get these nebulized into the body, to be able to put them in a nasal rinse and run it through and be able to expose our tissues to this molecular oxygen, is incredibly powerful. So hydroxygen is one we're gonna be talking about. Another one is Para-3. This is one of the antiparasitic, antimicrobial type of products from Cellcor. Um, this is the only liquid tincture from uh, the, the parasite line that they have so far. When you say para, a lot of people know that you can use this to address parasites, but it really can address more than that. We honestly can use this to address all other types of pathogens and whatnot within the sinuses as well, within the lungs, um, and it can hit on mold as well. I know a lot of us have found great success by using that there, so uh, it is a fantastic product to take orally, but this definitely is something that you can potentially put in a nasal rinse or in a nebulizer, so we'll be talking about that as well. Uh, this is really fantastic for a very stubborn type of parasite called strongyloides. Okay. And so it's one that can be often found in the nasal pathways as well as in the brain and in the lungs. It really likes to hide in these areas. So to be able to nebulize this, to get it up um, through the nasal path passageways and then into the lungs is super powerful. Okay. So be able to get the product to go even better systemically in those areas is very therapeutic, especially for people that have that very stubborn parasite, okay? 
And then we're also going to be talking about colloidal silver, um, you know, all different my, antimicrobial type of properties. If you guys haven't um, looked up colloidal silver, just typing it into a search engine, honestly, you'll find so many different things. Um, but it is very powerful to be able to be nebulized. Even with uh, young children, there are a lot of pediatricians, especially in today's day and age of what's going on, uh, that are giving the advice to go and nebulize it with children that are dealing with respiratory issues. Again, that is not medical advice for me, but in the holistic, integrative pediatric world, it is a very common recommendation, okay? So it's one of the nice things about the colloidal silver there. Um, so not only is it great for adults, but children leverage it oftentimes as well. Um, and so you can use this in a nebulizer. Um, I haven't ever honestly done it in a nasal rinse yet. I would just do it in a nebulizer or in a spray. Um, so I don't have a specific concoction that I would say in here. I'd rather someone just use a nebulizer, but it's possible that you could do that, I guess, if you wanted to. All right, so let's go with the colloidal silver at first. We will start there. Um, so again, Argentine 23 and Sovereign Silver are the top two brands that I would recommend. They are not all created equal. Um, so I, you can find this specific one on my full script dispensary that I do have, um, I do have a couple of different products linked on my website directly to my full script dispensary. I don't know if this exactly is on there, but you can just go to the link on that that is in my link tree. You can create a free account and be able to access this product as well as many others. Um, so you can start by doing it in just a simple nasal spray. I will carry this whenever I'm traveling, um, go and do like two sprays in each nostril twice a day is typically what I do, follow your practitioner's instructions. Um, but this is 23 parts per million. It's a little bit stronger than what I would do in a nebulizer, but um, it is an ultra fine mist, gets dispersed, will really kill just about anything that's up there, helps to break apart some biofilms that uh, lime, that parasites, that mold can be hiding in. So absolutely fantastic, especially when traveling, on an airplane, in a hotel. So I think this just is a great thing to have regularly. So it can be used as part of just a immune support protocol, um, mold protocol. So there's a lot of different usages for this guy right here. But you can also put colloidal silver into a nebulizer. So uh, ideally my attachment that I will be using for the nebulizer is a uh, face mask. I like this because then of course, I'm gonna be getting it into the nose and into the mouth, into the lungs at the same time. Uh, you absolutely could use just the mouthpiece, but clearly we're missing it, getting it into the sinuses here as much. So um, my preferred is personally with myself and my clients to be able to use the mask, but use whatever your practitioner is recommending for you to do. I think that this just kills two birds with one stone there and I find it to be more effective. So what you would do if you wanted to use colloidal silver in your nebulizer um, is the um, solution will end up going in this little chamber here. And typically I just tell someone to use a teaspoon of colloidal silver there. So a teaspoon of 10 ppm colloidal silver from Argentine 23 or from Sovereign Silver. You don't need to add any additional water in there. You just literally put the teaspoon of it in there because it's already diluted to 10 parts per million. So you don't need to add any more water in there with that, um, with that dosage. And then you literally will just press the button and nebulize. And so your practitioner may tell you to just do it for a certain amount of time. Typically I'm just telling my clients to go ahead and do it until they're done um, or until they feel like they feel a difference in their pathways and, and maybe that's fine enough for them, but we kind of play around with it depending on the person. Um, so just putting a teaspoon of the 10 parts per million colloidal silver in there and doing that one time a day, twice a day, numerous times a day, maybe three or four times, depending on how sick someone may be, we may change this up a little bit, um, but that can be a great tool with colloidal silver, okay? So those are the two primary ways that I'll use that, either in a nebulizer or just through a spray. This makes it super simple and easy, especially if you have um, very limited time just to be able to get it up there. But if you can do the full treatment, breathing it in, breathing it out, especially when we're really fighting something, that would be my preference, okay? All right, so that's colloidal silver. When it comes to the pair of three, you can use this in both the nasal rinse and with the nebulizer. And so what I would do is I would start diluted, okay? So I will say just general rule of thumb. I've had clients put anywhere from one to six plus drops 
of this pair three within a nasopure or some type of a navage, a neti pot, um, or even within a nebulizer. My husband actually dosed really high when he did it in the nebulizer. Um, you want to start low. You can get a burning sensation. There have been some people that literally you can feel in your brain, you can feel in your sinuses, depending on what is in there. So I say dilute always to start. You can always add more. You can always make it more potent, but do not make yourself suffer by going super, super strong right away. So what I think is a good idea is to go and take six ounces of distilled water, add a drop into it, and that is like the max that I would start with. If you wanna go super diluted, you could go and take a 12, 16, 24 ounce jar, 24 ounce tumbler, put all of your uh, distilled water in there and add one drop of pair of three to 24 ounces of water. And say, you know what, from that 24 ounce solution, I'm gonna add six ounces here, I'm gonna fill up my naso pure and that's the diluted solution I'm gonna use or I'm gonna pour a little bit into my chamber, my nebulizer, and nebulize that and see how I feel. And so maybe start off by adding one drop to 24 ounces of distilled water, just pouring that solution into your nasopure, into your neti pot, into your nebulizer, and go and use that. And if you feel like that's well tolerated, then go and add another drop into that solution and use that. And then eventually you can work your way up to you're using a drop in just six ounces of water and going and using that. I will say that I drum, jumped right to the, straight to the six ounces of water in here, one drop of pair of three and it burned. And so that's not super diluted. Um, I could have diluted it further. I just decided I wanted to, you know, tough it out and it burned. Uh, my husband heard me screaming from the bathroom. So it wasn't like horrendous, but it was not comfortable. <laughs> so I yelled a little bit, um, but it depends on the person. And you have someone like my husband that he'll go and nebulize, uh, you know, four to six drops in this little eight cc of water and be completely fine, okay? But I always say start very low, start very diluted and go and do the, um, you know, six ounces of distilled water and add you know, one drop max to that solution and go ahead and do that. You can dilute it even further, but that is like max what I would start with at first, okay? So you can go and either do this through a nasal pure and go ahead and do a nasal rinse that way, um, or you can go and want to breathe it in through the nose and breathe it in through the lungs and do a little bit more of a longer treatment and use it in the nebulizer, okay? So again, max of what I would start with is one drop in six ounces of water and either use that in your naso pure or take that one drop in the six ounces of distilled water and pour it into your nebulizer and nebulize, see how you feel and you could add up to you know, four to six drops per treatment. But again, it depends on you, your practitioner's thoughts. This is just some of the different options that I've used with my clients and with myself, okay? Um, so that can be really beneficial addressing parasites, microbes um, that can get caught in the nasal passageways, in the lungs, um, and even loosen up some mold, different biofilms and things like that in there, okay? All right, and then last but not least, is the hydroxygen. So this is the molecular oxygen that really can help to restore um, healing to your tissues. I mean, there's a lot of people with brain fog that when you're bringing um, extra oxygen to that area, of course, it's gonna be able to help alleviate a lot of that. Again, you're bringing oxygen to an area where a lot of microbes, a lot of pathogens can get stuck. And um, when you're introducing oxygen to the environment, they're not gonna be able to survive as well. So you're creating um, an inhospitable environment for them and you're making it a lot harder for them to survive, okay? So that's why it can not only be great to be able to breathe it in and just bring more oxygen to some of these tissues, um, but it also helps to create an environment that is difficult for them to be able to survive and thrive. Um, you absolutely can mix these together as well. The para-3 and the hydroxygen really go well together. In the past, for those of you guys that have been around a little bit with Cellcore, there was hydroxygen in the Para-3 formula already. They, within the last couple of months, removed it to make this a little bit more potent. So when you get your bottle of Para-3 and it is full, just take 14 drops of hydroxygen, 
add it to the two ounce bottle, it's a fully activated solution and you're good to go. You shouldn't really have to add additional hydroxygen in there, but if you wanted to give it a little bit of an extra boost, you could. So same dosage, it really applies when it comes to using hydroxygen uh, within your Nasopure, within your nebulizer, um, as it would with Para 3, starting out low with the same type of dosage and working your way up as you feel ready.